Welcome to the semi-final guys, time to decide the top 3. This time it's gonna be spicy because we have one big element of this competition a little bit more out of the contestants hands because we picked the songs and uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, does anyone, <laughs> does anyone want to start with someone or should I just go as usual? No, no I always start, I think it's someone else's turn. Mark. 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 Okay, um, where do we start? I mean, this has been an interesting one, the whole competition in all, as um, it's one of my highest scoring, I think. And I think kind of going forward, we've managed to get something that we've needed from a lot of these contestants in their body of work. And I'll start with one that I'm super happy with, Dream Kitty. So. Ooh. I feel like, I don't know how many seasons we've been trying for this now, but it's like there's been a big push to get a song that's had some emotion in it. And finally, I felt something. I think we've got it here. And it's a shame because I think one of my favorite performances of the round, I'm probably going to have to give my lowest score on. I'm kind of gutted about it. <laughs> uh, but there's a real emotional connection that I got from this song. And even though there's issues with the technicals, it was beautiful and, and raw. Um, I think the big problems with it is that the rhythm in places were off sort of stabbing out the phrases to hit the beat was a little jarring in some of the, the softer parts and in those soft parts as well it felt like there wasn't enough air being moved to deliver the note but I mean those push notes those push phrases were something special and they're really up there with the kind of ethereal thing that Dream Kitty's always been really well known for but yeah I was really pleased to feel some real emotion from this one. Yeah Mark you kind of copied my notes actually because I said Kito this was magical I I mean, this was, like Mark said, the emotional moment I really wanted to hear from you. It was so beautiful. I really felt the emotion in this. Your voice was super delicate and ethereal. I'm just basically parroting Mark's notes at, at this point, but this was truly something special. And you haven't always given us something that I think is special. So this was really your biggest moment so far, I think, or one of them at least. At times though, I think your voice got too thin because your voice disappears into a whisper. And there are also minor voice cracks in this and no, no real belting. But overall, it was very good. And now Andrea is gonna be the mean judge, <laughs> like she already warned us about. I'm just, I'm not mean, I'm crabby. My air conditioning is broken right now and it's hot and humid and I'm crabby. We don't even have air conditioning <laughs> here in Europe, Andrea. <laughs> I don't care about that. I'm hot, I'm humid and I'm crabby. Um, ah, but I, I really don't have much to add because I basically said exactly, I used basically the same thing that you guys said. I said light, I said airy, ethereal. Um, I really loved the voice. Uh, I basically had the exact same points that you did though. The only criticism I had were there were a few points like where the staccatos were, uh, like where she's saying all the things we should have done that we never did. It seemed like she kind of got stuck a few times where the voice wasn't coming out the way I think she wanted it to. Like it was kind of getting stuck, a little strained there. Like maybe her voice was just a little raw. Um, I don't know if maybe she has like uh, a sinus issue or maybe she was getting like a little summer cold or something. It just sounded kind of uh, gravelly when she was getting to that uh, staccato point. But other Otherwise, I just think that I really loved how sweet the voice was and how ethereal the voice was. I do think that there was a nice growth to a powerful moment and then kind of like this pullback to a very tender moment. I, I really did like um, that point. Don't you yeah. even start. Ah, oh, the dog as usual. <laughs> she, she disagrees with me on something, I know, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This round in general is such a high quality round. I mean, yeah. I think basically everyone gave us a top three worthy performance. It's gonna be a tough one. This is gonna be hard. Although I gotta say there are four in particular that I would be happy to see in the top three specifically. Mm. So we're gonna see four later. Four in the top three. That, that's that's the hard part. Four yeah, in the exactly. top three. Yeah, exactly. That's the hard part. I mean, I had several tied scores, so it was really difficult. Yeah. 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 It's my turn, right? All right, that's, that's fine. Sure. And you know me, I'm just gonna go in alphabetical order. So, Ivy. Hey. <laughs> Great song choice, obviously, since it was mine, but <laughs> that's besides the point. I mean, because you really got to show a thicker voice in this that I don't think I have heard before from you. You showed a lot 
of range, amazing dynamics. I mean, I got chills on multiple occasions in this song, especially on those runs in the end when you sang I am. I mean, that vibrato and trill is very prominent in this cover and that is seriously the best part of your voice. That is so stunning. There are though some very obvious pitch issues in this in a lot of places and I had to dock two full points because of that. The uh, control is not quite there yet. You really need to work on your runs. But I think also this is the most difficult song in this round so I do have to give you props for having the guts to try this. And I'm really glad that I used my star on you. It was so worth it. I'm so glad I got to hear this. Not only because I'm a great Christina Aguilera fan but because I think she was perfect for you. And I have a feeling you're gonna disagree. <laughs> Me personally, uh, I, I did like the thickness of her voice but I just think the echo chamber might have been a little too thick. Uh, it just seemed like it was just it was just too heavy for me. It was stifling that natural trill. I'm having a deja vu moment. <laughs> I know. It was just, you know me in the echo chamber. Sometimes I think less is more personally. Uh, I just think it was too heavy. The runs could have been a lot tighter. I mean, some of the runs just kind of went off in yeah. their own direction. I just, eh. um, and there were some pitch issues. And right during a big climactic build, it, the key went just, it, it just, I don't know, it did its own thing. It was a real hard song. Um, I mean, I really love her voice. I mean, it, this was hard for me because I really liked it in many ways, but then there were just some things I couldn't ignore in yeah, others. Yeah, same, so. actually. Yeah, I think I'm along the same kind of lines. A couple of rounds when I really enjoy Ivy's voice, so I just don't necessarily always enjoy the delivery of it. Um, I think you've picked up on, on the main issues is that pitch does go wayward, particularly in the second half. Timing as well goes in with that. A few bits that are rushed. My only point on the vibrato, I don't know if that is just there naturally or if it's like a deliberate attempt to put that in but if it is deliberate and you're going that heavy on it I would maybe think about backing it off a little bit to get a cleaner delivery or at least use it sparingly um, I could be wrong I'm just kind of getting a feeling that because the vibrato's there it's then throwing off some other aspects but you'll know that better than than I will um, yeah tough song I like bringing it down a bit in the early stages in terms of the key and then adding that bottom end sort of warmth to it that was a nice touch and I think brings out the, the best aspects of your voice I think yeah great voice execution maybe a little wayward again and that seems to be the story for um, for the last couple of rounds yeah I can see your point that the, the vibrato can be used more sparingly to really make it a special thing rather than just something that's always there but at the same time I'm such a huge fan of Ivy's vibrato in particular or that trill or tremolo or whatever it is I mean yeah. that's what makes her special so I think the, it was wise to use that a lot. Yeah, definitely. Maybe. I think um, my main point is if that's the reason why she can't deliver on these points like timing and pitch, maybe thinking about backing it off. If it's just a natural, it's mm. there, she doesn't think about it, then you know, fine, have at it. Yeah, but at the same time, maybe she did... Maybe if the echo chamber was a little bit less. Mm. Maybe it was just... <laughs> okay, I can... Mm, uh, I mean, it, it gave kind of an, an 80s feel to it, so I didn't mind it that much but you know me and Reverb, I have a higher threshold yeah. of accepting it than you guys, so... <laughs> yeah, but anyway, what was I gonna say before you interrupted me as usual? <laughs> <laughs> What we're talking about, her vibrato. Uh, yeah, yeah, she was actually pitchy when she didn't use it as well, so that wasn't the only factor affecting it. So they're probably not connected. Okay, fair mm. enough. Scratch that then. Yeah, I noticed it on the last note in particular too. Oh, there were definitely places where she didn't use it and she went off, mm. and there were more than one place, yeah. Yeah, she can always experiment and see if pulling back on it can make her more technically proficient, but that's gonna come with training. Yeah. Too. So I think we're ready to move on, move on for now. Okay. So Andrea. I am. Okay. I do not like doing the alphabetical order thing. So I'm going to skip a few and I'm going to go to Emma because um, we had two competing songs. It looks like. Yep. Two people did the same song. And so I don't know what Mark is going to do next since he's after me, but I'm going to do Emma first. And if Mark wants to um, then follow it with the person who did the same song, he can. For me, Emma, I, I like I like Emma's voice. I think that her voice is sweet. I think she's got a very uh, lovely voice. But for me, the song 
it started off a little awkwardly for me, kind of a little nasally maybe. I couldn't really feel where the song was going until more towards the middle of the song. I don't know, I don't I don't know, I don't know how I would explain it. The only word I really wrote down was it kind of felt more aggressive rather than kind of light and romantic. The only word I could describe it was aggressive. And I was just like, tone it back a bit. Be a little bit more light. Be a little bit more sweet. You're, you're getting kind of heavy with this. You're getting kind of just too much. You're, you're a little bit too strong. This is Tay Tay here. This is not her breakup song. This is not her, I'm I'm going to take a sledgehammer like um, Carrie Underwood or, you know, I'm going to take a sledgehammer to your car, key your car up song. <laughs> this is a, this is a romance. Something was off. Yeah, I definitely had points on the energy too. So I think I know what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah. Mark can go first, I think. Okay, I mean, just to answer that point, this song can go one of two ways. Because I, I get the soft romantic, which is what you tend to get from the studio versions of it. But part of the story behind it is the kind of tear of having a romantic interest in two brothers. <gasps> so Vampire Diaries. Yeah, so <laughs> it's absolutely got some different edges to it that while they're not necessarily there in the studio track, they are there in the lyrics and there in the meaning behind it. And I can kind of understand taking a different take from it for actual notes rather than <laughs> rather than going for that point. I didn't know how I'd feel about this song being so vocal forward compared to the original, but for me that works really well. The ethereal highs in the intro are a real sign of what's to come. And like this track, I threw it in because it's a blank canvas that someone can take and, and really bring it to life with something unique. And then what we get is rich and layered, showing all aspects of Emma's voice, whistle tone and all. I've got a few pointers regarding trying to make a song your own like that like when it floats over the beat then stabbing in phases or phrases sorry right on the beat can sometimes pull you out the moment a little bit and I'd like some of the phrases at the end to resolve better than they do they just kind of fall off and, and sit and don't really go where I'd, I'd like them to but generally I am very pleased with this one it felt like something taken and then morphed into something completely different which is a skill in itself for me yeah I gotta see say I don't always understand your song choices in the judges choice but this time I got I gotta <laughs> give it to you I mean I don't like feeding your ego but I have to give it to you this time because it is a song that you can really make your own I mean Emma and Mocha really showed just that so yeah, yeah okay so Emma I love your full and thick voice it has such character I kind of regret not choosing Leanne Rhymes for you because she would have been perfect for you as well this is a beautiful cover for you it's very different from Mocha's and spoiler alert I actually prefer Mocha's version but this was also great. Your head voice never disappoints me with those high notes in the last chorus for example and I love the playful panning on the backing vocals in the end because I heard it go up the right ear and that was a fun effect to me. In the low notes you are struggling a bit though. Your voice cracks and you lost control the nasality got in the way a bit to me and there is also some pitchiness in this cover that I have never heard from before from you and you also need some more energy in the beginning but those are just some minor issues this was overall amazing as always you are very consistent i guess then we should go to the other of version course. of this love yep. that makes sense <laughs> um i guess if we're throwing our cards on the table early then this wasn't my preferred version of, of it of course but... not of course not why why would it be <laughs> but uh, yeah we'll deal with that later but <laughs> After listening to this, I've got to say I'm so proud that I was worried that Mocha just didn't get dynamic from some of the previous entries and from our discussion on Discord. And then we get this. And this is exactly what I was looking for. The high harmony work is beautiful. It's polished. I think the pitch falls a little flat at points, but it was the understanding of the dynamic and the feel and the energy, which is something that I think Mocha was lacking a lot in her body of work from the previous. Didn't think she would go for this song choice to be honest I thought she'd go for one in her own list but mm. what I was hoping to get out of her with my song choice for her we've got with this I was worried if she knew how to handle something that's a little softer and a little more nuanced and it turns out she absolutely does so yeah, yeah really good stuff I think the problem that I've got with this compared to Emma's version is we've got someone that's delivered a improved version of the original here compared to someone that has taken it in a completely different different 
different direction and expanded on it and opened out to different places and that to me when you put them side by side makes one stand out from the other but I guess I know the song the best out of the three of us so maybe that has something to yeah. do with it and I can be a little more open to it going in a different direction I don't know well I have listened to it as well I mean it doesn't take much to know a song <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna need those pitch issues points from you as well because I didn't hear them just saying but okay so Mocha to be honest I was first pretty salty that you didn't pick I'm with you by Avril Lavigne because that was my song choice to you I mean I was thinking if you want to win you pick that song because that would have been just perfect for you so that's why I didn't expect my opinion on this I mean okay spoiler alert but this is beyond a 10 this is your moment it was ethereal and there's a delicateness in your voice that I've never heard before from you like Mark said, I didn't know you had this in you because you've never showed this much dynamics before. You have powerful vocals in this and this is full of emotion as well. There are many intricate parts that work together perfectly and this is way better than the original and that was my main thing here. You added dynamics that's not there in the original. The high belt in the middle was so surprising to me. I mean, you just went higher during that long sustain and the build up is just perfect in this song. So please bring Bring this to the finale if you make it there and you have to make it there at this point so that's my opinion okay all right so basically I'm gonna have to agree with one or the other I mean I can't agree with both of you basically so um, unfortunately <laughs> I end up having to agree with Petri on Yay! this one I, I I actually really did enjoy Mocha's version better I, I don't know I just feel like a less aggressive version of this song is just more enjoyable of course that is is just something that's a little bit more of an aesthetic probably more than um, anything on Emma's voice I also did feel like Emma something just didn't click in the beginning there was some nasality there was some kind of like a pitch whereas Mocha from right from the start it just was kind of like this ethereal this light this immediate connection so if we're being honest this is what I'm hoping to hear from a song like this it's light it's airy it's romantic it's less aggressive I, I mean I think there could have been a little bit more maybe emotion behind it I don't necessarily hear the feeling necessarily like I hear the vocals are more romantic but I don't necessarily hear the emotion I don't hear the heart that comes with the song I think the song was picked with a purpose from behind the scenes I think there's a behind the scenes reason the song was picked yeah Mark spoiled his song <laughs> and discussed it but I think that there was a little bit of a heart that was missing but other than that like technique wise vocally wise I think this was more pleasing for me and I enjoyed this just a little bit more I didn't think a heart was missing from this I mean, mm. this I, I, mean me... I think there's just a little bit emotion that was just maybe a little bit tweaking needed a little tweaking but yeah I didn't I, I didn't get that anyway moving on yeah so Angelina I think you are treading a fine line when it comes to production because this was right on the limit of what I consider overproduced I don't think you got there but it was I mean yeah just think of that next time <laughs> don't go over that line okay but I mean you are only 14 and you sound like a believable artist already I mean you have exceptional control the high belts didn't sound heavy like they have before I like this texture much better it really feels now like you're giving 100% whereas it felt like you gave 80% before you have beautiful backing vocals in this as well the more I listen to this the more details I notice that I like you are harmonizing perfectly in this I really wanted you to pick a ballad though because I wanted to hear that dynamics from you the softness is important too but I still ended up being satisfied with this from that standpoint I do have a question still if you have the low range because you have the high range but I haven't heard such low range from you yet so and I really want a winner to move me basically to tears so that's something you really you should think about next round if you make it to the finale I really enjoy your thick voice and I don't know why you thought this was your worst entry because this was actually your best entry to me just keep improving because that is something we definitely look at here on next stop singer is growth and you are clearly doing that so great job angelina 
Um, is that Mark or me? It's you. Don't you oh, know <laughs> our order at this point? I don't know. I <laughs> my I, I I had a brain fart. Um, I actually enjoyed the song. I really think that this was a great song to display her voice. Um, I think she's got an absolutely amazing voice. I I've always thought that she had an amazing voice. I definitely am the one who fought for her when we had that whole thing in the group round. You know, mm. of all the songs that were listed, I wonder if this wasn't like my favorite song. I, I just feel like this might have been just kind of like a safe song for her. I think that there just would have been, there were other songs that might have displayed a little bit more dynamics, a little bit more of something a little different of Angelina, just something a little stronger. I mean, we are in the semifinals now. We're in the, the last of the last to get to the top. And I think I just would have liked to have seen a different like moment, a different side. And I, I, while she gave us a strong performance, probably one of her best performances. I don't know if this was the performance of the competition. I don't know if this was the the showstopper of all of the other competitors in this round. You know, I don't know. I was kind of left wondering, just thinking about it. So I don't know. I really love this, but I can see your point that it wasn't completely different from what she has done before. And yeah. I think that's why I would have loved to see a ballad from her because that was yeah. Aria's suggestion actually and it made total sense yeah this was still a super impressive cover and uh, we're gonna discuss more about this in the voting I'm sure I'm, I'm yeah. just trying to keep oh, my yeah. Yeah, definitely. mouth sealed right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah this to me feels like a bit of a breakthrough moment now I've this is just a personal thing but I've looked hard for a church's cover on YouTube and I've never been able to find a good one because Lauren Mowbray's voice is such a tough one to replicate and while trying to work out what to pick for Angela and then that sort of popped into my head. Like, what do you do with a crystal clean vocal that is mid and, and top end heavy? It's tough to be able to select that. And yeah, a ballad would be interesting to see how that would go. But with this, I think we've found the point when Angelina's voice starts to break up a little and starts to give us a little bit of edge, mm. which is great. That's something that I was hoping to try and get out of before he cheats and, and we just didn't. And I've tried, um, spoiler, I've been messing about with trying to redo the production on that and try and get that push and it's it's not only possible she's so clean but we start to get it in this um, the high harmonies were a little out of place they just kind of hang out on their own in terms of not adding to the overall offering but they're pleasant and they show the sort of top end of her range it lacks a bit of the polish that we want I think she said she was sick or had some issues health wise which might have meant she couldn't get as many takes in as she wanted and might not have given us that polished feel but this feels like a step in the right direction it's maybe not all the way towards making herself the complete performer and giving us that edge and that bottom end that we want but it's a sign that that is maybe there when it maybe wasn't before so yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing this as a little victory what wasn't yeah. polished about it though um i think a few parts of it if she could have got another take in it might have been a little more on pitch mm. or she might have it was kind of the smoothness of getting up to the final note could have maybe been tightened up a little more it's minor stuff because i think it it was relatively there. There's nothing where it's like, oh, that's way off pitch. But yeah, I feel like a few things could have been cleaner or tighter or a little more in the right place, but nothing that's super stand out. Yeah, I, re I really tried to find flaws in this because I really struggled with my score on this. Timestamps would be interesting, but I understand if you don't have them available right now, so. Uh, <laughs> I've, I think they're in my notebook in the car. <laughs> I, th but I think you always say that, though. Yeah, because I always <laughs> leave my notebook in the car. Like, I take that with me to go and write stuff while I'm driving okay. around, and I forget to bring it in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always handy. Yeah, anyway, that may or may not be an issue in the voting. I mean, I don't, I don't need to write yeah, now. Yeah, we'll have so, to see. Yeah, we'll see. Why don't we just uh, do wait, 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 wait. Uh, we what? have to save first, because I have a feeling. Oh, we're in. I heard the name, and I have Mate. a feeling <laughs> this is going to be long, so. All right, okay, save. okay, okay. Okay. Part, Part two. two. Excellent. Okay, Maeve. And you were saying about Maeve, the latest, I was saying Ma about the latest Maeve. Maeve scandal. Here we go. Okay, here's the, here's the thing. Now, now I I walked in as you guys were starting to talk about the latest Maeve scandal. I didn't get the full <laughs> gist of it because I came in a little late. I had just come back from work. So this is what we're going to do. I am going to turn my time over to you and Mark to begin so that you can catch me up on what's going on 
with this whole Maeve thing that just went down. So, uh, <laughs> Mark and Petri, if you will begin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mark? <laughs> I mean, there's not much to really report. I just found out that you'd gone to get raw stems and then didn't tell us until <laughs> I asked, <laughs> which seemed like the kind of thing that should have been shared with the group. You know? I was but, gonna so. tell you though. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I know. I just wanted to hear it before we got into the um, call, rather than try and do it on the fly. But um, okay, well, to be fair, we didn't get any new information from that recording. So yeah, <laughs> yeah we didn't get like uh, raw stems. We just got the uh, the acapella, the produced version with the. Uh, yeah. back track taken out mm. <laughs> okay because i didn't get to listen to it so there, there was no raw stems no there's no raw stems it's the produced version without a backing oh okay 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 so was it me to stop <laughs> yeah uh, sure yeah i was because I, I didn't even know what I, I didn't know what was going on i thought there was raw stems that i missed no if there were it would have been useful probably for us to go through it but um no there's not so don't worry about it too much. <laughs> okay um, okay so the first listen to this really got me excited about it the original to this i only like it but i I love Halsey's live versions and I love this. It's really edgy. I can feel the vitriol dripping as she punches some of those phrases in there. On a technical level, I've got some pointers. It feels like the growls are pulling the pitch a little flat and there's a lot of talk singing where maybe there wouldn't have needed to be on, on some of those phrases. But the caveat to that is if correcting it would have taken away from some of the impact of the performance, then honestly, I'd rather it was left as, a, as it is. Some some of the low parts, I've got a question about whether those are vocal parts or if they're an octave effect that's been added because they sound they sound very like pitch wise they sound a little unnatural. It's not a big problem really because in the context of the whole mix it just works and it adds a little bit of bottom end to it which is perfect and I guess in the context works really well. It's not that noticeable with the backing in etc. And I only really noticed it when I listened to the thing that um, Petri sent through. Um, but again, you know, it works worked and was utilized well a very strong performance for me yeah okay this might shock you with my intro to this but i'm gonna say well done mave this was a unique entry it was ethereal and a little quirky just like you but it was a little repetitive to me and that's a song choice issue this song was actually not recommended to you so i think we can blame you for the song choice this time like angelina i think you are treading a fine line when it comes to the production again you said you pulled back on it but i'm still not 100 convinced about that because the belting on the backing vocals in the end didn't sound natural at 248 to 302 the transition sounded artificial to me and i wonder if the belting was put in the background to hide the tweaking i couldn't decide whether or not i was impressed by that i'm either wrong or i'm being gaslighted to doubt my own ears here however the technique has to be there because that you can't fake as far as I know and the whistle notes make you unique in this competition so you should definitely be proud of this entry but the pitch is so important so if that is tweaked then that's just not fair I am interested in other opinions on this though the reverb was kind of on the heavy side this time if that were drier then I maybe wouldn't have questions about the production because a lot can be hidden with reverb I did cheat a little bit like I said I asked for the raw stems but you said and the a cappella instead. So unfortunately, that didn't ease my concerns about this. So if I mention reverb, you're not going to get mad at me? No, not this time, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it, that was just one little. That was one little note I had. That, that and I'm like, I, should I bring it up? Because I don't want to have that fight again. Uh, but yeah, that was that was one little note I had in there. The reverb was was a little bit juicy. It was a little bit juicy. I'm not not a big fan of the juicy reverbs. I, I mean, Maeve, I, I think this is a solid performance. And I'm gonna say it again. You know, for those in Discord chat, obviously you've read the conversations. I think for someone who fights so hard for auto tune, you don't realize how little it's necessary especially with your sheer talent uh with your vocal talent i mean mixing sometimes is necessary for certain things like when your mic is peaking or when you have to you know make sure that like when it comes to like the instruments and the instrumentals but when it comes to trying to correct 
you're when you go off pitch or when you are when you're too sharp when you're too flat or or certain other vocal techniques you can rely on your sheer talent to fix those if that ever pops up because one day technology may fail you but your voice won't your talent won't and if you rely too much on technology to clean up your flaws you risk losing that natural technique to fix it yourself I mean you, you gotta rely more on yourself than on technology but I think this was a solid performance although I do lean towards Petri where I think you might be starting to kind of do a little bit of a cheat and then kind of tell us you're not I do kind of hear a little bit of something sneaking in and then you're saying it's not there it's not there I promise it's not there you know but it sounds like it might be there just might be just might be but I do think you've got a natural talent and I wish you would rely on that talent a little more because this is a competition a talent competition not a mixing competition I wish you would trust your talent more because you've got the talent you don't need the auto-tune you just need to trust your talent and that's all I got to say about it yeah and even Mark has said that there is an octave effect on this and haven't you said that that is basically a sheet because you can like it adds that bottom end thickness that you might not have already there <laughs> it, it is and it's not it's the kind of thing like if I'm if I'm producing something I mean mine and Maeve's view on production is clearly different because I would produce differently for a singing competition compared to something that was going out as a um, distributed thing yeah it'd be much more vocal forward and a lot more stripped back for a singing competition for me yeah and to be honest if I was working with a vocal I'm gonna add a lot of stuff to it so I'm gonna add some kind of octave if there isn't one anyway I'm gonna double it I'm gonna left right pan and, and work something like that there's gonna be a lot of things that I will do to thicken that up but I will put it in a place when it's gonna be more like a feeling than it is gonna be a sound and then with that octave effect in the whole mix I didn't really pick up on it it's only when I listen to it without the backing where it starts to kind of come in so for me that isn't it's a cheat but then it's also the same cheat that people have been doing in production studios since before I was born you know you would double track a vocal and then put it together that's happened since people were recording on tape it's kind of the standard mm. I think my overall view on production is that for us we're judging on singing so we've got boxes that we want tick in I've got like eight nine ten boxes that I want so if I've got a track I'll go through and I'll listen for what I'm trying to get out of it so a heavily produced track is going to cover up a multitude of sins but it can cover up a multitude of the things that I want as well like dynamic and feel can get lost in compression body warmth and cutting through a mix can be lost in EQ diction and vibrato can get washed away in reverb it's it's one of those you can easily go over the top and just suck out things that I'm sitting here trying to score on so I'm just taking the view of if I can't hear it in what I'm given I can't score on it and I don't go digging too much to try and find it and that for me kind of gets me through this production too much production not production kind of thing it's like I pick the voice out of it and if I can't pick the voice out of it I judge on what I'm given it's each to their own I think the trouble is unless we put a hard and fast rule in on what is classed as too much production which is always subjective anyway like the whole competition it's tough to really be able to <laughs> nail it down people will will do what they want and then it's whether we can suck the voice out of that or not yeah, yeah. but how do you conduct a competition like this other than people bringing in their subjective opinions into it I mean, they're, they're, yeah, right, right. It is a music competition. It is subjective. There's no way out of that. So, so that's, it's tough to then mm. put a rule in with a subjective what is too much or not enough production with a, like a list of bullet points or something. You can't really do it. It's kind of yeah, that's why, tough one. That's why there is no rule. But how can you be sure that the voice you hear is actually hers? <laughs> to be frank. Uh, I mean, it, it depends. The thing, auto-tune doesn't worry me because pitch is one thing. And then in order for auto-tune to work without it sounding like you're bending a pitch wheel you've got to be super close like you've got to be able to get close enough that you're just tightening it up otherwise it sounds ridiculous <laughs> um, so that doesn't worry me all that much I can either notice it or whatever but I'm, if you haven't got the ability to produce a note that's at least close auto-tune isn't going to work and then if you can't do that you've also got questions about technique which is going to throw in things like dynamic timing a lot of the other things I'm also going to be looking for like for me if auto-tune 
Fortune can fix something on a pitch, then fine, it can do that. It's not going to be able to fix other issues that are probably there by someone that can't consistently produce a note that's very close to being on kick, is my view on it. Yeah, but I'm also thinking that we do tend to pick up pitch issues even if they are close to the notes, and that can dock a half a point at least. So is it really fair if autotune helped just a little bit? But I guess autotune is a tricky issue because you can use it without people noticing it, and I don't think it was so obvious that there's no debating it. That is definitely something I considered. All right, I think we gotta mm. move on because we are almost to an hour and we still have one more competitor. Yeah, that's right. Competitor. So whose turn is Look it? at me, I'm the one moving you guys <laughs> on. <laughs> wow, what's happened to you, Andrea? Wow, what has happened? <laughs> You're the talker here. Wow. <laughs> okay, so Nathan, a lot of things that I like in this, but I think my feedback is very similar to the round before. Pitch-wise is pretty there. There's impressive range and there's clearly effort to put in the right energy at the right time, which is my main concern. But it feels very one-dimensional in terms of the dynamic. Like the push notes don't add anything in terms of volume, really. So it feels like the surface is still being scratched, even though there's an attempt to do a lot more, which it's probably something that Nathan just hasn't really dealt with before, like over compression from the mic or in post. But again, for the same reason, it's I, I'm judging based on what I'm given. And if I've got a soft part that is a, exactly the same volume as a push driven part, then that to me says that there's some dynamic missing. But, you know, I like range. I like the attempt at the performance. I like the dynamic. Yeah, there's a lot of like the, the volume thing is the only thing that's thrown me off. And I think it's just a compression issue somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Nathan, I love this song because it's such a big score. It makes you feel many emotions and the song is basically about life itself. So you really need that big voice to pull it off. And you really needed a big moment to really see you as the winner candidate to me. And I say good job actually with the energy and the runs. And I understand you wouldn't do this like Sam Ryder, but there was some real grit lacking in this song like you had in your Aerosmith cover. You are belting still from the nose and that's not gonna change in a few rounds, I understand that. But you should look into voice training to learn to get power from your side ribs and not only use your mask for power. This song relies heavily on high notes. Whenever you sing the high notes, you go into your nose. So in hindsight, I maybe should have picked a different song for you. But at the same time, there are other contestants that can belt properly. So you really needed to prove that to me. I was not a fan of the staccato in the pre-choruses because they sound dry to me. But you obviously worked really hard on this cover. And it was so cool that you used the past contestants in this. That's the first. I really felt the passion from this song. I did edit this afterwards though, like I sent to you, but you are of course only judged on the version that is sent to us. Just wanted to make that clear to everyone listening. I just said, you know, Nathan, I love your voice. And I also love, like Petri said, how you incorporated some of the singers from this season who left a little earlier. There's a lot of passion in this song. I just think I would have loved to have seen a lot more of a difference between the power moments and some soft moments, kind of like Mark said. At times, I felt like we were getting power and then more power, like kind of like don't blow your vocal cord moments. <laughs> it, it's like a contestant who became our VIP round winner. Scott, if you remember, that was one thing that I said where was sometimes he went from really strong to like screaming strong. And that's kind of like how I felt in this song. We didn't have a soft moment. We just had a powerful and then an overpowering. But I just, I love your voice. I love that tone. I love that quality in your voice. I don't know. This round is just killing me that only three can go forward. That this right. is going to be the hardest. I mean, this is, this is going to be hard, but yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's if only yeah. I had a second star. I know. <laughs> <laughs> was that everyone? Yep. That was everyone. I suppose it goes quicker when there's only seven, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, are we ready to move on to the voting? <sighs> 
I am. I am. I will yep. never be ready. No, okay, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> we have our decision. Awesome. Can someone else do the outro this time? Because now I'm pretty <laughs> emotionally exhausted. Mark is, <laughs> Mark is so great yeah. at those. Yeah. Okay, so we have our top three. It was very challenging, but also very easy in a way. It's odd how that works out, but uh, it feels like the right thing has been done. And now all we've got to do is to try and pick a winner. <sighs> Sometimes for us. Yeah. God help us. Pray for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, this is exciting. Can't wait. Thanks for watching. Don't miss the upcoming result. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.